Karen Kinder was born in Day County in northeastern South Dakota. She was raised on the family farm south of Andover and attended country school for two years before graduating from high school in Bristol. After graduating with a degree from Northern State in Aberdeen, Karen made a career of teaching elementary art for over 30 years in Sioux Falls and Brookings. Karen has retired from teaching and lives in Brookings where she maintains a studio and focuses on her work as a painter of South Dakota landscapes. Karen, thanks for being on the show. Hi, thanks so much for inviting me. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, and so, um, and uh, you know, Karen's been showing in the area for for quite a while now regularly. And I think I first became aware of your work probably 92 or three. Um, and and uh, we were talking about whether we'd met before in person, but like, uh, do you remember the the openings that they used to have at the Oscar Howe? Oh, or maybe yes. they still do. Uh, no, no, the Oscar Howe really is no more. Oh yeah, well, the old Oscar Howe. Yeah, the old Oscar Howe was wonderful. There were some wonderful shows there. That was a really great time, I think, oh. for South Dakota artists. There were yeah. so many opportunities there. Yeah, lots of opportunities, and then um, the uh, you know the the openings were were generally like really well attended. Oh, they were. Yeah, yeah they were. Everybody had such a great time there. I remember uh, Jeff Morrison right. being there as the curator or something. I forget exactly what his title was, but that was kind of a kind of a golden age, I think, for South Dakota artists right there in Mitchell. Um, yeah, my friend um, James, I, I mentioned I was going to be talking you talking to you today, and he wanted to make sure I asked you about the receptions at the Oscar Howe, because I guess, I mean, there's a lot of people that kind of re fondly remember Oh yes, hanging yeah. out. And, uh, and I think that was um, during those things, I had some of my first recognition of my work, too, which was special. Oh, yeah. It was a great place to... But me too. I mean, that's kind of where I first started started it's showing. A great meeting place for artists. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't know if uh, it seems like. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like a lot of receptions aren't quite as big a deal as they used to be. Well, they're not this year for sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> definitely not this year. But I kind of wonder if it's social media or if it's that's maybe just my experience or what, but. I hope they come back because they're really fun for the artists. Yeah. It's, it, I think it brings to, uh, kind of gives everyone a sense of community and belonging. And Exactly. And it's nice to know there's some other crazy people out there. <laughs> That's exactly what we need. <laughs> Spending hours in their studio alone <laughs> making stuff. Okay. Well, you have, uh, right now you have a piece up at the, in, it's part of the governor's show. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm so excited to be on the Governor's Show again because it's been a few years since I've been part of that. Um, I was in the first, uh, the fourth, and the fifth, and now the ninth. So it just feels good to be part of that again. Right. And um, what can you tell me a little bit about the painting that's in the Governor's Show? I don't know that I if I actually have a image of that one, but well, it's it's called Grazing Sheep, and honestly. I really, really enjoy painting sheep. Okay. One of my very favorite subjects. Uh, this one shows sheep that I saw north of Brookings. These particular sheep were Suffolk sheep that were grazing in a just a just a nice lush field. I've at the time I took photos of the sheep and brought them home to work on and I don't know that I knew the owners of the sheep at the time, but they were always out in this particular field. And, and I'd just go looking them when the light was, I'd go looking for them when the light was right. Because they're, they're just beautiful. And the, the farm I grew up on, we had sheep. And one of my jobs was to take care of the bottle lambs. And that's kind of how I got attached to sheep and thought that they were just, well, you know, they'd be like little puppies that followed you around when you feed them. And I know that sheep can be kind of cantankerous and not necessarily the easiest animals to deal with, but right. I love them. So, and I, I love the shadows you can get with them when the light is right and 
you can play with the colors of it. That's one of the things I have fun doing is using colors that you might not expect to see because white isn't just white. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that never occurred to me that because they're white, I mean, they're going to reflect all sorts of uh, color in the environment. Exactly. And you could probably get away with some pretty crazy. I do get away with some crazy <laughs> colors just for the fun of it. I mean, you can make them look round and fluffy, but you don't have to use white and black and little white yeah but probably no black so, not gray. <laughs> so do you you feel like um growing up and living in south dakota most of your life has influenced your work i think it's influenced my work dramatically because it's the landscape i know and i feel it's it's in my heart it's you know i you you always as a kid i don't know you get attached to the land mm-hmm and so, I mean, I can close my eyes and I see the place, even though nobody has lived there since 1970 and there's really nothing left anymore. I still see yeah. it. And the, watching the weather change, you know, looking west to see the clouds coming. The, I don't know. Apparently I was an artist already as a kid and I was seeing like an artist, but just didn't realize it. So that's one thing that I've kind of missed about uh, living in town and then living in the hills also. Um, you can't see the, well, I mean, you can sometimes, but not not like, uh, um, you know, in southeastern South Dakota where you can look west and see the clouds build all afternoon. You know, you can just... <laughs> I know exactly what you mean because, I mean, even though I live in Brookings and it's a small place, essentially, but I've got trees surrounding me where I live and I don't see as much of the sunrise or sunset as I would really like to see. But I don't really want to go back to the isolation of the farm either. So yeah. I just go look for it when I want to see it. You know, just hop in the car and go look for, grab the camera and go see if I can get a better view. So um, when you were, like when I, I grew up on a farm too, and I mean, painting, um, I guess at some point I discovered painting, but I mean, I wasn't really introduced to the idea of, of um, you know, painting pictures or just painting as an art form until later. I mean, how did you, what, what are your some of your first memories of being, you know, interested in art? And making art. Sure, sure. I always like to draw. Mm -hmm. I don't know why necessarily, but I always drew. And um, like I went to a country school, and I I do remember some art there, but it you know it wasn't technique or anything mm -hmm. like that. And went to a small school after that, and there was not an art teacher. Never met an art teacher till I went to college. But it's just something I guess just in me that. I can't really explain. I I remember being given a set of of uh, some kind of paints. I think they were tempera paints by my brother. My brother's always been one of my best supporters. He's the oldest in the family, and he's a musician. But he wouldn't say he's an artist, and I always remember him telling me that I could draw better than anybody in the family, which was kind of something I needed because the rest of the family was pretty outstanding in their own ways, each of them. And so art was my thing, but I can remember also you know, as an eighth grader, buying myself little tubes of oil paints and trying out oil paints on little cardboard canvases, things and painting what I had around me, like the family dog and the, um, Right. <laughs> setting up a little tea set and painting it. Um, it just, it was what I did. I did it in my free time. I did it when my homework was done. I, I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to explain. I don't really know, but it's it's the thing that's the most me about me, I guess. The fact that yeah. I've always been an artist and, and yet I had, I was pretty scared to go study art when I went to college because I hadn't had any background. But it's a kind of a relief to get there and realize that there were plenty of other people like me that were coming from small schools that really had only done art on their own. Mm -hmm. We had, I had this wonderful English teacher that 
she um she made she ordered American artist for the library. I I always believed it was for me, <laughs> and she'd always tell yeah. me that it was in, and I should go look at it. <laughs> so I was supported a lot, you know, encouraged in what I did, but loved loved studying art in college. Went to Northern because it was 40 miles from home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Family had all gone there, didn't really look at any place else. And just the chance to take actual real art classes with real art teachers was pretty amazing to get to do. Okay. And um, so uh, how about teaching? You, you spent quite a bit of time teaching. Did that influence your art or did you feel that kind of well, fed your interest or... I think I taught simply because I didn't know what else to do. You mm -hmm. know, since I didn't know any artists, it didn't occur to me that maybe I could just be an artist. But that being a teacher was because I knew I needed to support myself. I needed to make an income. And and uh, I discovered I really did like teaching after I got going. The majority of my teaching has been elementary. And I think one of the things that it has influenced me is to kind of keep things simple. Because when you present art to kids, you need to get it at their level. And I think maybe I'm in some ways kind of at their level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and, and it's fun to watch kids create. It's fun to watch the joy of creation that they have. And I've, I've gotten a lot out of having been a teacher. Yeah, I, um, I've only, I don't know, spent a handful of years teaching um, art in the classroom, but I really enjoyed it. If uh, the opportunity, I had the opportunity again, I would, I would take it. Kids love art. It's called border collie. The people who own the sheep, I, I had their kids in school in elementary art at Central Elementary here in Brookings. And so I got acquainted with the family and I've got a chance to visit and see their sheep when I had their kids in school and I've kept in touch and continued to visit their sheep. They showed me how their border collie runs the sheep. And this image was after the, they had run, he had run the sheep and put them where they're supposed to be. And, and now they're just looking at each other. <laughs> and that, that was the fun part of it. But the sheep are very special because some of them have a genetic defect that they're working on to scientifically try to prove that it can help treat Huntington's disease. So it's, it's a, uh, it's been fun to get acquainted with them and and learn about that aspect of it too. I've Looks gotten like some really interesting people who raise sheep. The border collie looks very serious. Oh, he is. <laughs> I don't think I've seen border collie ever not look really serious. <laughs> but the sheep don't have that same serious look about them, do they? No, they're just <laughs> hanging out. He's uh, he's working though. Yeah, but he's not off duty. <laughs> oh. He is not off duty. This was a little eight by eight. Um, there are some, well, at Rayfields, which is where I have artwork, at, in December they do a little eight by eight show. And so they paint up little bitty paintings that are eight by eight, and they, they sell them for a special price there. Is that so, eight, eight by eight? Eight for by 88. Eight by eight for eighty-eight dollars is what they've done in the yeah. past, and I bet they'll continue to do it. But give me a chance to paint big. I'd rather paint big. Small is hard. Yeah, I've found I spend more time on small paintings sometimes exactly. than I do on a larger piece. That is exactly right. Okay, it's and hard. maybe maybe this blue is some of that reflected light you were talking oh, about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes there's pink and sometimes there's purple. A lot of times I can create the sense of that they're rounded, you know, that it's not flat just by the colors that I use going from kind of a pink to purple to really dark blue. It's fun. Yeah, years ago I heard um, a talk on Impressionism and the, the speaker... Ha, um, kind of reminded all, I don't know who, I, think, I don't, man, I can't remember where this was, if it was in Sioux City or what, but he, 
he wanted to let all the artists know that, um, you know, South Dakota, Northern Iowa was at the same, was it latitude or longitude, but kind of the same place on the yeah. globe that um, France is in Paris and, you know, where the Impressionists work. And he said, you know, a lot of you, you, because of that, you will get the same light effects that the Impressionists did. Interesting. And, um, you know, the Impressionists, from what I remember, I don't know, or one of the, the stories is that the white of the snow is where they would see these, all these crazy colors and the reflections. And so um, I guess, in, you know, we have the white of the sheep. Yeah. I'm going to well, start painting sheep, I think. Too. I have seen it in snow as well. You know. It's there, yeah. And you almost have to see it. Well, this this rooster is uh, my sister's rooster, and she lives in New Jersey. <laughs> He's not really a South Dakota rooster, but he looks just I wouldn't the have same. known. <laughs> he looks just the same as any South Dakota rooster. His name is Rooster. Was this a commission? He had a lot of personality. That yeah. rooster had a lot of personality. Yeah, most roosters have too much personality, I think. <laughs> and this is yeah, the Suffolk sheep. That I th it's got to be one of the Zelinsky's sheep. They are big sheep raisers around Brookings. And I did have their kids in school, too. <laughs> I just love those. Yeah, this one. I don't remember who he is, but he was fun. Um, do you have any artists that you, um, I mean, like when you, you're not feeling that you go to, like when you, you need some inspiration or you need, um, you know, you know, I've always been able to make myself go to work. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't have to be inspired to go paint. It just, I can treat it like a job and I can go and I can go paint. Yeah. But I do get so much in inspiration from the impressionists. The impressionists are my favorite. Van Gogh, a top favorite. I just love, I just love um, everything Van Gogh did, and and Monet. You know, if if I have a chance to visit an art museum, I'll go straight to the Impressionists. Mm. Love the haystacks, uh, Monet's haystacks. Uh, those those would be my top favorites. Yeah, I, don't I really like the feel. So those are the ones that are fun for me. This one, this uh, this painting in particular has some really nice brushwork. It looks like. Thank you. On the on the back, and then, the, you know, I want in the, the shadows below. Show, yeah. And this one is maybe more than than I always than you know than typical, but I usually like to use the paint thick. I like the brushwork to show. It's smooth is not me. Detail is not me. Well, it is a painting after all, you know. But yeah. Oh yes, this, I like I like this one too. This reminds me of Clay County or parts of Clay County. This this I called Prairie Creek, and this is just a little bit further east than the farm that I grew up on. But this is a lot like the farm that I grew up on. This is that's mm -hmm. one reason why I particularly like this one. Those creeks that you always see in the spring that you might not see other times of the year, and I go looking for those too. There's yeah. one. One around Brookings that I try to find in the spring. And then uh, on the tree, I kind of see that same kind of this, you know, it looks, I uh, wish my cursor would show up on, or does it show up on the screen? It does. I see it. Okay. Um, you know, the, the brushwork kind of reminds me of Cezanne with the, oh. you know, these patchwork yeah. quilt kind of. Yeah, maybe I've gotten some inspiration from him. I do like Cezanne a lot. Yeah. And then is this the same? It's this isn't the same, same painting, is it's it? It's not the same painting. I did okay. one in a square format, similar to the other one. Very similar, but not the same one. Working from essentially the same image, but I had had somebody who wanted a square painting. They specifically wanted a 24 by 24 inch painting. And so I had all, in order to get one, I had to get a box of six. So I decided I'd better see what I could do with some more of these square canvases. And that's what I did. I just took the same basic image and they're never exactly alike. That would be no fun, but but it's yeah, it's the same place. So 
Um, how do you start a painting? Do you start with a sketch? Do you start? Um, it yeah. sounds like you take a lot of photographs. I do take a lot of photographs. I have at times gone plein air painting to a plein air event because I enjoy hanging out with the artists, but I don't really enjoy painting outdoors. So my, my usual procedure is to get a bunch of photographs and try to get things where the light is the way I like it and, and then decide what I want to paint from there. And I do work out, first of all, a small sketch to get the design the way I want it. And then I like to draw things out full size. Hmm. Um, like if it's going to be an 18 by 24 inch painting, I will use an 18 by 24 inch piece of paper and get it the way I want it. And then I'll use the old scribble with pencil on the back of the paper and trace it onto the canvas. Now, it wouldn't be as important with landscapes, but if I'm doing anything at all that's got angles or buildings in it i've got to get it right mm. first because I, if the angles don't look right it's just never going to look right and there have been times when i might have you know i'd go from a small sketch and just draw it on the canvas the way i want it but i find it safer for me to, to get it the way i want i still make lots of changes you know once you see it on the canvas it looks different and i'll, I'll make lots of changes but but I do want to have the drawing the way I want it first, and I find it saves me a lot of time. So uh, do you... I do dark to light, a traditional mm. oil painting methods, yeah. work dark to light. I always do the sky first, though, because the sky influences the whole painting so much. And then I just, I guess I make the rest of the painting work with the sky. Now, I did acrylics in college, because that's what everyone is doing at that time. That ages me, I know, but mm. they were, that was the big thing and they're easy to clean up. It makes sense in an art department, but I never could get them to blend the way I wanted to because they dry too fast. But I do think that working with acrylics first developed my style because in some ways I think I paint more like an acrylic painter and I do these quick brush strokes because I got in the habit of doing that, trying to get the paint to blend. <laughs> so I think the acrylics did me some good, but and there's times where I still may fall back on acrylics if if I need to get something done quickly because the oils take so long to dry. You know, and I love the layers though. You know, the layers, the underneath layers affect what's on top so much that you don't get with acrylics. Right. You use oils, right? Yeah, I I've tried acrylics, but I'm like you. I can't seem to get. You know, I mean, I'll be. I might get something I, that's okay, but you can always. To me, I I can always tell it's an acrylic painting. There you know, there's. I've, yeah, I've tried an acrylic after I did an oil and something small. You know that, and it's the difference is profound to me. You know, you just they're just not the same. Um. So, when you're like this painting could could we go find this spot and find the tree i could show it to you mm -hmm. you don't so do you take do you take a lot of liberties with the i mean do you move things around much in your paintings or is it pretty much like um a sense of a real sense of place and that you can find well, this spot starts as a sense of place you know but it might not stay that way I mean, there's yeah. times when I've taken a little bit from this photo and a little bit from another photo. Mm -hmm. and it all comes together. But this this one is, you know, I think I could show you the spot. And I think you might say, yeah, okay, that's probably I get it. it. <laughs> okay. And then, um, so what's happening here? Well, this is at the Sidewalk Arts Festival in uh, Sioux Falls, right by the Washington Pavilion. And I got started doing arts festivals when we moved to Brookings. Um, we moved to Brookings fall of 1991, and I know it wasn't the first summer, but maybe the second or third summer we decided, you know, we're right here. We could apply to the arts festival and see if, see if we'd get in and give it a try. And so this is my husband back there in the picture. There was just 
taking it to show, hey, we're open, come on down. And couldn't possibly do an arts festival without Keith. Keith builds me my frames. He built those panels. The first time we did an arts festival, we got, he built those panels and we got a really cheap canopy from Kmart and we got some plastic sheeting to put on the sides in case it rained and it worked for the few, first few shows that we did. Mm -hmm. We don't do tons of shows, but it's handy to do the one in Brookings and it was kind of a way to get out there and get known and you know, you, you sit there some years and you don't do a whole lot and you wonder why you're doing it, but other years are good. And we've had some good years in Brookings and some good years in, in Sioux Falls at the Sidewalk Arts Festival. But we, we do talk to each other about maybe we're getting a little too old to do this stuff anymore. Huh. <laughs> it's it's heavy-duty work to do it. Yeah, it looks like it would be. But it's it's been worthwhile and our kids have enjoyed participating in it too in the sense of you know they would help us set up and they'd enjoy hanging out behind the booth and their friends would come by and visit and they'd go off do their own thing and and uh, they, they still come home for arts festival okay i know that um you you've got something coming up here so maybe we'll just look at a couple more paintings and sure. um This one, um, I think I called it Sheepgate, and that actually is showing <laughs> the frame too. The one of the frames that Keith builds, and these these were the same sheep that the border collie was in, and just I, I like how they stand around and mingle and create some interesting patterns just themselves. There were more sheep there, but I. I thought that was probably enough for this one. This one really shows the colors that I like to use. You can see the pinks and the purples and the blues. Yeah, it looks like it might be sunset. That's a good way to think about it. I'm not sure it was, but <laughs> you can think about it like that. Yeah. Um, this one's she, actually at Rayfields right now. So that's sheep, one of the did you say ones. Sheepgate? I don't I know why I thought that was funny. That's a, I believe I called it Sheepgate. Yeah. You know, after sounds, a while, you start to run out of names. Well, no, it sounds like there might be some political kind of, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't really thinking about it like sounds, that. Sounds like it That's could be a pretty thought. deep title. That's a fun thought. Uh, I like uh, I like the rhythm you set up here. Thank you. With the, in the hills. Definitely nice. rhythm there. Um, this was actually part of a pair. This one was roadside sheep, and to the right of it would, would be roadside bales. Mm. And there's a road in the middle, that they, and it meant to hang side by side. They work that way. Do I have, oh, I have roadside bales. There it is. Okay. There's roadside bales. And this one I did first. This was an actual place. It's, it's a... Uh, a little bit west of Brookings and a little bit north, real near where my cousin lives. And so it's a place I've driven by a lot. And I kind of created the other one to match up with this because it felt like it needed a it needed a, a mate. It, it needed to, to balance with another one. So the other one is a figment of my imagination. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I like the grove of trees, the big cottonwoods. I yep. like barns. <laughs> it's making me a little homesick. Okay. Well, hey, I think we better, I guess this is it. Did I miss anything? Oh, this is plenty. <laughs> yeah? Anything else you want to say? I could look at my list from last time. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, anything you didn't get to? Well, I just talk about one of the things that i do like to do is i like to show ordinary places mm -hmm. i like the ordinary places that that i see around me in south dakota and that's the kind of things i like to paint and i guess that's a good note to end on yeah i think that's a really important thing i think a lot of people have a real attachment to the you know the landscape of south dakota yes. and um a lot of times from the 
world at large, we hear that, you know, if people even know where South Dakota is, they think it's some, uh, you know, there's nothing worthwhile there, but it's just not true. If you look. If you look. See. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate this. It's been great chatting. Really good to visit with you. Thank you very much. Okay. And I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.